Welcome to another data science with Python tutorial. In this particular tutorial, we will carry forward our previous tutorial that was on web scraping using beautiful soup object and tag object. Now that we have finished the with tag objects, let's start looking at the navigatable string object. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we have installed beautiful soup. I showed you how to do that in the previous part. So in this case, we have already installed beautiful soup and then we just want to check to make sure that our version of Python is compatible with the demonstration we are going to do. So this particular Jupyter lab file was written for Python 3.8 and let's check the version we are running here. So I will say import sys and then I will just print the sys version. Run that and okay. So we are at 3.8. So next let's go ahead and import beautiful soup into this environment. So we will say from BS4 import beautiful soup and run that. Now we have our beautiful soup library imported into our IPython environment. Now in this part, I am going to show you how to work with navigatable string objects. Navigatable string objects are used as containers for chunks of text that are stored inside of tags. So let's just go back to our example from the previous part with the soup object. We will create a variable here called soup object and then we will call the beautiful soup constructor and let's pass an h1 tag so we will create a string and the open tag is going to be h1 attribute underscore one equal to heading level one and then it is going to read the future trends in iot in 2020 future trends in IoT in 2020 and then we will just close this H1 tag. Okay, so it looks like I uh, put a code that which I didn't need to put so I need to remove that. And then we have two codes there so clean this up a little bit. Now we want this to be read in as LXML so let's just pass a parameter that says that LXML. Okay. And then I will just double check my syntax and everything that I have typed out here. Now let's create an object called tag and assign it the name h1. So to do that, we will just say tag is equal to soup underscore object dot h1. And then let's call the type method on the tag object to verify that we have actually indeed created a tag object. So we will say type and then pass in our tag object and run this okay so you can see that we have indeed created a tag object here so let's verify the name of the tag it should be h1 so i will just write tag dot name and run that and yes it is indeed h1 so we have an h1 tag but if you just wanted to isolate this string object from within this tag object, then what you can do is you just say tag dot string and it will print out the string. Cool. So here we have it. That's our string from within this tag. It is right there. I want to show you here how actually tag dot string is a separate object of its own. So let's go ahead and just go to type function and then pass in tag.string and when we run this we see that tag.string is actually a navigatable string. So let's play with this a little bit. I will create a new variable and let's call it our navigatable string and all sides are equal to tag.string and then print it out. So basically what this is saying is that our navigatable string is now this future trends in IoT in 2020. 
if you wanted to replace the string object from within the navigatable string you can just call the replace with method of of the navigatable string and then pass in a replacement string so let's try that out and we will just replace this future trends for iot in 2020 with nan so let's just try this out we are going to say our navigatable string and call the replace with method and we will pass in not a number nan so and then just print our string again so we will then say tag dot string and see what it prints out and as you can see now our string is just not a number we have replaced this future trends in iot with not a number okay cool now let's look at how to utilize navigatable strings so i am giving you this html document and you can find link to that document in the description section or you can use your own as well and what we are going to do is we are going to convert this to a parse tree like we did in the previous part so right now i will just run this cell if there is one or more string object within a parse tree you can easily isolate them one way to do that is by calling the stripped strings generator to return all of the strings within the object where string is consisting entirely of white space are ignored and white space at the beginning and end of the strings is removed so for this example for each string object in the parse tree this strip strings generator passes through strips white spaces and then prints out each string that contains a printable representation so let's just try this out here we will say for string in our soup object we will call stripped strings and then for each of these strip strings let's just print out a presentation of that string so put a colon new line i'm going to say call it print function and we want to print a representation of the string so we will just write repr and then pass in the string and then run this all right now you can see that our strings have been pretty much cleaned up we just have a list of strings here without the tags or any of the markup within the body of this series of strings the last thing i want to show you in this particular demonstration is how to access parent tag objects within a parse tree so let's create a new object called first link and then we will just set it equal to the a tag from within the parse tree first link is equal to our soup object dot a okay and then we will print out our first line good so this is actually the first link in our document and the text that it contains it is actually clickable and it redirects to a bit link and if we wanted to access the parent of that first link we could just say first link first link dot parent and we see that we now have the parent tag of this first link now the navigatable string object of first link is a string that reads last month Ericsson digital invited me let me show you we will say first link and then we are just going to look for the string so we are going to take that string we run that and we are basically going into this link and pulling only the string from within it right so that is now printed out as the string object and lastly we can also retrieve the parent of that navigatable string object to do that we would just say first link dot string dot parent and run that so in this case the parent of the navigatable string is the a tag which is sort of self-evident right so now that you know how to work with objects in beautiful soup we are going into using beautiful soup for data parsing